In the last year or so, Adobe has added some things to the Layers panel to make it more useful. And in this video, I wanna go over some of those newer things and also offer some tips for organizing your document with Layers in Illustrator. First, we now have a search bar at the top of the Layers panel and a filtering menu so you can filter your Layers panel by content type. And I'll show you a demonstration of that. Another newer feature is this button at the bottom of the layers panel, save selection. And here you can see I have a few saved selections for this document. So I can just highlight the waist details or the main outline of the drawing. Now save selections have been around in Illustrator for a while, but having them here on the layers panel is very convenient. If you wanna see where these are originally, we can go to the select menu and then right here, save selection and edit selection. These are your options for that. And then right down here, we have your saved selections appearing at the bottom of this menu. And we'll also take a look at how to save a selection and how it can help your workflow. Now, something that has been around for a long time, but I like to point it out, I'm just gonna click on this one detail here is this magnifying glass at the bottom of the layers panel for locating objects. So when you have something selected and you click on this button, Illustrator drives you right to where that lives in your layers panel. So I can see it's on a layer or inside of a group with a lot of other objects. Now, before we move on to the demonstration, I wanna show you one other thing that can help you in organizing your document. And this is a plugin, so this is not included in Illustrator, but for those of you who use Astute Graphics, this is a relatively new part of the subscription that's really, really helpful, and that is AG Layer Comps. And so what you can do here is just click on these buttons, and once you've set up a view, in this case I have a zoom level and my screen position saved, then you can just click. I'm gonna go here to the inset so I can focus on that part of the drawing. Here I've got a view that shows the dress without any of the details. So you can save your layers panel visibility options as well in these views. Here's one that focuses on the table and then we go back to the full page. And they're very easy to update. All you do is make whatever change you need when you have one of these selected and then hit the update button here. So that's just a handy tool. And now that we've looked at some of the new features in the layers panel, I wanna show you how you can incorporate those into your workflow. So here I have the same artwork and in the form that we probably very often receive it, just everything on one layer. And you know it's gonna be a lot easier to work with if you layer it up. So to begin, I'm just gonna start here with the low hanging fruit. I've got this inset and then I've only got one layer, layer one. I'll go down to the bottom of the layers panel and click the create new layer button. And then the selection that I have on the artboard is contained right here in this little indicator that shows the thing that I have selected on layer one. And to move it to layer two, I just drag it right up to that space on layer two. And then I'm gonna double click on the name and name this inset. All right, so we're off and running with two layers. Next, let's use the filtering. So I'm going to click on this button here and there's so many different types of content that we can filter by. Let's start with text. This is a really helpful one to use. So I clicked on that and now I'm only seeing layer one in the layers panel because the inset layer doesn't have any text on it. And if I twirl down here, everything that I see in the panel now is just limited to the text in this document. So my next step would be to select all of this text here, create a new layer and move the text to a new layer. But one thing that you'll notice is when you're selecting objects here, I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and click on each one of these objects. And it gets a little tedious, especially if you have a lot of them. In fact, if I go down to the bottom here and click you know, thinking that I can do sort of a typical bookend selection here, it's just not possible in this column. And so I picked up a little tip from reading Reddit and I wanna share that with you so that you don't have to tediously shift click on everything here. 
And what that is, is if we come over here to this column where we can toggle the locking like that, you can just drag your cursor down there. It's like, works over here. It works for visibility as well. Just one sort of smooth movement like that, which we're not able to do over here. So the little trick workaround I learned is to lock everything in this column by dragging like that. And then when you go to unlock it, and I'll go into the menu here to unlock all, everything that's unlocked is now selected. So I love that, that's a handy little shortcut. Then I'm gonna create a new layer like I did before just by clicking on the plus button here. And when I do that, I'm no longer in the filtered view. Now I'm back out with my multiple layers here. And this is the layer, the new layer that I've created. So you can see I have some things selected over here, some things are not, but they're all indicated by this little square here. So it shows the selected art on this layer. Now I just drag this up to layer three and I have all of my text on this one layer now. So I'm gonna double click on the name and change that to text. So now I can blink off the text or lock it however I want to work with that, but that just makes it a lot easier. Now let's work with this filter again. So I'm gonna go click on the button and here I'll choose shapes. And what this is going to do is not only get shapes like you know circles and rectangles, but it will also get these lines that were created with the line segment tool because those are live and kind of like a live shape. So I'm gonna click on shapes and we can see that I have those on these two layers, the inset layer and layer one. I'm gonna focus on layer one because we've already got inset taken care of. So I'm just gonna twirl down here and then I'll use my newly found trick for locking and then unlocking to select everything in this column. And just like before, I'll create a new layer. This takes me out of that filtered view. Everything that is selected on layer one is indicated by this little blue box here. And so I'm gonna move it up to layer four and I'll give this layer a name, call this annotations. And it is kind of a similar color to the blue down here. So I'm gonna double click on the layer and just change that color to magenta and click OK. All right. So this file is becoming easier to work with all the time. So I can just turn these off and on or lock them and it's a lot easier to work with. I'm gonna try filtering one more time and this time I'm gonna filter by effects. And this is interesting because when you click on effects, you're not only getting sort of the effects that we all think of like drop shadows, but it also takes in things like pattern brushes. So this is definitely worthy of exploring more. And in this case, I have some pattern brushes here in the zippers. So I wanna filter by those. And so here I have the list. And when I look here and turn the twirl downs, I can see that there's a zipper there and a zipper there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these, holding the shift key and just clicking on this one and this one. And now I don't want to put these on a separate layer, but instead I wanna make these into a saved selection. So I'll go down to the save selection button here, click on that, and I'll name this zippers. Click okay. And now to go back to the unfiltered version, I'm just going to the button and then clear all. And let's go ahead and I'll close this up so we can see all of the layers there. And I'll deselect and let's look at our saved selection down here in the menu. There's zippers. And when I select that, we can see I've got those two zippers selected. So this is a great feature for getting selections that are on multiple layers things that you don't actually want to have on their own layer. Now, I know there's another part to the zipper here that I wanna to add to this selection, and I can see it's right here on layer one. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select that as well. So now I have all three parts of the zippers selected. Then I'll go down to my save selection button, and this time I'm gonna update 
the zipper selection. So just click on update selection. And now I'll deselect and let's go back here and check out what we have in the zipper selection. And so now we can see I have everything. So I've updated that saved selection. And so now with all of these layers and a saved selection, this file is going to be a lot more efficient to work with. So before I wrap up, let me just show you one more thing. If you come here to the options menu, there's an option at the very bottom, panel options. If I open this up, this is how I make my layer thumbnails larger. I do this a lot when I'm teaching, but I also think it's really helpful just for sorting everything out. So this is where you can change the size of your layer thumbnail and then click OK to apply it. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed these tips for organizing with layers in Adobe Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my online learning community. Find out more at my website, lauracoylecreative.com, and be sure to join my email list. You'll receive a welcome gift and helpful Illustrator tips delivered right to your inbox. And thanks for watching.